I am on the edge of my seat once again and humbled by the presence of the absolute legend that we have in the studio with us today. I am so excited. Very few times does a young man get to, never mind interview, but meet somebody they've looked up to for so many years. And uh, today, finally, my dream came true. It is the absolute legend, Mark Fish. Welcome to our show, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you for the kind words. Um, hopefully after this interview you still have the kind words that you are saying about me at this particular moment, but thank you. You are so welcome, sir, and I can just feel the presence is, is, is a gentle, you're very tall. Like I didn't expect you to be so tall, but you're a gentle giant almost. You are, you are a good-hearted person and, and acknowledged everybody when you walked in. You, you, you look everyone in the eyes. It's such an honor to meet you and, and to, to realize that you actually you know, you're like one of us, I'm you're, just human. A person. I'm just a human. you're human I'm just and, a... and uh, humble and, and just awesome. I can't wait. So I'm going to kick off with my first question, my favorite question. If we could magically, boom, snap our fingers. 17 year old Mark Fish walks in, sits on this couch and we start processing what is important to you, what are your priorities. At 17, what's going on in that mind? Are you thinking about, you know, you know your, your next few steps or are you just having fun like all of us? <laughs> at 17. At 17. So at 17, I'm, I was very fortunate. I'm actually matriculated at the age of 17. Um, and wow. because my, my grandmother wanted me to get out of her nursery school that she ran at the age of five. So I started school when I was five. But 17, it was about women, girls. It was nothing but chicks. So I didn't think about, oh, what am I going to do now when I'm finished foot, uh, sorry, finished school? What, what's my career plan? And it was like just having fun, you know, with, yes. my, with my mates. My one friend, um, King Kenny, Kenny Gardner, we would drink together. So I'd go out with him. And then my other friend, Manny Mendes, we would go try and get lucky with the ladies yeah so, so, just so, go and impress so, the girls just, just, you, yes. you know on that note a couple of a couple of weeks ago we interview um uh, a very big ceo wayne bishop and you know he's a yes he's a straight up guy you know he's got a suit on and he's he, he, he's just confident and ask him who were you at 17 what was important he says to me big arms and chicks that was what what was it i'm like okay so it's not only you there's hope for all of us <laughs> there is hope for all of us i think i think at the age of 17 and uh, you know whether you're finishing school or still in school um you know why worry about life so much because i know we all want our, our life to be planned yes so let's go to varsity and go there and, and you know you have a plan for your life but I mean, life changes just like that. So um, I was fortunate where I didn't have a plan. Um, I obviously was playing football yes. um, for a club, Arcadia Shepherds, but I, I didn't even know then, you know, um, people were saying about, you know, do I, do I envisage myself going overseas and playing overseas? I didn't even, even think of it. Even selected for the national I, team. I didn't even think of it at the time. It really? was just playing football at Arcadia Shepherds, getting all my mates, and like I said, I'm going to Baccaroos <laughs> and going to, um, you know, a nightclub and this and that. Let's, let's see where it takes it. Kid. And then, yeah. And then when I did finish school, then it's like, okay, now what, what are we going to do now? I still carried on playing for Arcadia. But, you know, very fortunate. I, um, you know, had the people that I was playing with, um, Paul Matthews, his dad was a, uh, um, actually for me, the, the coach of, uh, of John McCosmos. Yes. So he told his dad about me. Um, and his dad came and watched me. And then his dad told Joma, Joma Sono. And Jomo came and watched me play at Arcadia. And I think within the year, I, was, I found myself playing at uh, Jomo Cosmo. So it wasn't, it wasn't like I was, when I finished school, I was in limbo, like, oh, what am I going to do now? So I, <coughs> not many people know the story, but I, um, <laughs> my mother said, now I must do something to get a job or something. So I think, I can't even remember. It was like a pots and pans, Tupperware thing. I can't even remember it, but I don't know. I went to like the, the, the seminar, the course, and then I found myself in Joburg in Hillbrow, now trying to sell pots and pans to people on the street. Yeah. So not many people know that story. I the, can't the, believe how you've dragged that out of me. The incredible mark, the incredible mark fish at 17 selling pots and pans. Can you imagine that? Well, no, 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 no. Trying to sell. I, I don't think I sold anything. I no, didn't suck. Okay. No, 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 I didn't sell. But I was trying to, it's like, 
anyway, my mother said, you must go get work. And anyway, so, but that didn't last long, obviously, because then the opportunity to go to uh, Joma Cosmos came quite early. So what, what I love your answer is because, you know, it's it matrix are writing exams and, and there's so much pressure on, on young people mm. today. And, you know, you've had the most elaborate career. You've done it all. I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing that, that, that you haven't experienced mm. in terms of your career. But at 17, you didn't have step one step. Your sequencing wasn't planned and, you know, the I's dotted and the T's crossed, which gives, you know, the young generation also the confidence that, it, take it easy, your life is just starting. Mm. It's, it's about to get exciting now. So don't put too much pressure on yourself. And, and like you said, you, you get seen and you start playing for Joma Cosmos. So how is that? transition for you as a young man what's going through you, you know the ego obviously goes up because now I'm 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 a, I'm a main I'm, a, I'm the main guy and at 19 you appear f am I correct for the first time playing for for Bafana Bafana yeah so so no um again our country was in a different state I mean okay. obviously we so this, I'm talking about 92 now yeah. playing for Cosmos so we're going to new a new uh, South Africa so most of my friends were like, really, you're going to play football in, in the townships, really? And I was, I'm very fortunate that what football has given me um, through Arcadia Shepherds and um, through growing up at Sunnyside Primary, uh, Sunny, going to Sunnyside Primary, playing for Arcadia Shepherds where we had players of all colors that I was playing with as, as a kid. Yeah. Obviously, because of the system, what was happening, uh, not at school, but through football, I was mixing with coloreds, blacks, Indians, whatever. So it was no, it was natural for me to go now go play in the the, the townships in the communities because yes. I was doing that through football. Yes, and for playing for Arcadia Shepherds, which is I don't think many people. I mean, I had sorry, I had a guy talk to me on Saturday about Arcadia Shepherds and what's happening there. That club, um, I think it gave me more than I think any education could ever give me because playing there. The people that I met, the coaches that coached me, the environment that I was in made me and helped me to be able to go and travel the world and experience the world to the best of my ability because of the upbringing I had of Caddy Shepherd. So I'm very fortunate where, you know, I don't see color, I don't this, I, it's, I get on with life and this is what it is. But through that experience of that club, Arcadia Shepherds, and I, it sounds like re, very rep, repetitive, but. Um, now I get quite emotional when I think of it because it was a club and I've got friends now that I played f football with, friends that are owners of companies or businesses, whatever, that I grew up playing football with. And that environment was just, it was a safe haven for me. So the, the, the step of going to play for Joma Cosmos, my first game in Fos it was it was natural for me because it wasn't, it wasn't a big thing because I had experienced already through the, the club that I played for as a youth. So if, if at all possible, if we can, you know, just take you back to the, the first time you're in the locker room. I'm getting goosebumps just to hear your answer. You're in the locker room. Um, it's your first game. <laughs> I'm just like, I, I, you don't even have to finish your sentence. I remember it to this day. Please, What sir. happened? No, because so Joma Cosmos, um, you semi-pro. So we trained only tw twice a week. And then uh, you, players still, some players still had jobs. Yes. So it was semi-professional. Uh, you play, you train twice a week and then you play on the weekend. And my first game, Force Lewis, uh, well, I actually, the only reason why I remember it is because I don't even remember who we played against, but we, um, I'm there, trained room. Now, because it's semi-professional, um, you polish your own boots, whatever, so I'm, my boots in my kit bag and put it down. Next minute, this guy is standing in front of me, he says, no, where's your boots? I said, yeah, he said, no, put them in the middle of the, the, the change room. I'm like, why? <laughs> we put it in the middle. Next minute, I see this guy throwing water water on my boots on, on all the boots that are there i'm like so what are you there, doing there's Mooty. a tradition there's yeah, a Mooty. Mooty. <laughs> so they're Mooty. Throwing Mooty on your boots. i said my brother what are you doing <laughs> i polish my boots don't you dirty my boots <laughs> and that's that is really um my first experience of at cosmos I don't, I've, the, the game is blocked out i don't even remember who we played against and also um um cosmos signed me as a striker as I, was a a I grew up as a striker, so they signed me a striker to replace my late brother, um, Chipper Fulamon Masinga. Um, but I could never replace him. So, but within three, four months, uh, um, Joma made me a defender, but signed me as a striker. So, one of the games that I do remember at Cosmos, I had um, a teammate, 
he became my teammate. Um, <laughs> I went up for a ball. He's a defender. I went up for a ball. I get an elbow in my face. And this guy says, listen, yeah, youngster, you don't belong here. Oh, wow. So I was like, I don't know, whatever. So the, then I think it was late in the game. He's defending. <laughs> I jump up. I headed the ball down to my team. No, no, I headed the ball down to my teammate. We score. I said, listen, old man, you don't belong here. <laughs> anyway, he became my teammate at Orlando Pirates, Kevin Lane, stability unit. And it was so, <laughs> I I we always respect, joke about it. That respect. That youngster, you don't belong. I said, listen, yeah, old man, you don't belong here. <laughs> so, watch that, watch and that. we grew up, uh, we played the Pirates together. So yeah, it was, it's, um, but that was my Cosmos experience. Was I just, yes, obviously I played football, Cosmos, this and that. But when people ask me about Cosmos, I remember that first the Muti. experience, the Muti get throwing on my boots. I'm like, mm is not cool. I don't no, like it. No. Let me polish my own boots. I'm here to do <laughs> to do my job. 100%. Amazing. So I like this question as well be, because it's technical. If you if you download if it's possible at all. Maybe Elon Musk can get this right. But if you download your experience in football and you were to you know maybe summarize it in in one mindset that you could take back with you that will serve and, and advice from you will be evergreen it, it can be deployed in our lives mm. in our work in a sport maybe an aspiring soccer star that's coming up that says okay that makes sense i can i can take that info from mark fish and i can deploy it in my life to serve me what would that one mindset be that you wish you had you know when you were starting off that could perhaps help someone on the on the on the other end of the camera so I, I think again, it's it's a it's a, it's a very good question. It's a you say your mindset and, and get it all in one go. Um, if I look back, I know what I experienced, and and people will go, oh, but don't you wish you did things different? I'm not that type of person. Yes. I, I think that I learned that for a for a reason, yes. and I did things for a reason. So, um, but yeah, my, I would say the the mindset is definitely we. You and I, I tell the, the kids when I when I do football um, community stuff is that you get out of life what you put into it, and basically that I believe in that hundred percent. You know, at the end of the day, if whether you're a CEO, whether you're a doctor, whether you're a sport, a rugby player, soccer, cricket, or whatever in life, whatever you put into it, you will get out. If you give nothing, you will get nothing. Beautiful. So I'm a firm believer in that, and I I try and I did that as in my football career, certainly, but I give. So my wife will agree. I give a lot to life. I, I have to enjoy life. I have to. This is life. It's too short. And this and um, and I tend to hang around people that feel the same. Got you, you know, I'm not. Yeah, I don't need people to stand and point fingers at me. Oh, but you did this, isn't that? This, and that. I know what I did. Okay. Uh, the f um, first person in my life is my wife now that knows everything about me, and I mean everything. And <laughs> I think that's a good thing. But yeah. she knows everything. But I, had, I needed to reveal that when, when we met, just to, this is who I am. This I'm sorry, it. this is who I am. And will you love me from here? I, I think then, then you build a foundation for a relationship that has no limit because there's nothing, you, you know, nothing that can be said to her from your past that will shock her. Mm. And she loves you for who you are, for the person that you've become, not the person you were. Love mm. it. Mm. I absolutely love it. And and what you put in is what you're going to get out. I love that ethos. We, we, we always say, even in sales, if you take a look at selling, the work that gets done behind closed doors, the effort that you put in, reading the books, um, exercising, training, making sure that you know, you anticipate, you sequence correctly. You know, a, a, a friend of mine always uses the sequencing um, saying he says you can't be pregnant at 17 so you you have to finish school then you have to go and go to university then you have to get a degree then you get a nice job meet a nice man you know the sequencing mm. the the falling pregnant is after you're getting married and a lot of people want the success at 17 but they haven't put in the effort they haven't put in the work and then they get surprised i'm getting nothing because you haven't put in anything mm. so i like it really like your advice thank you if you were to point out a couple of mistakes that the youngster should look out for, that not is a trap, but, but telltale signs that if, if you are starting to hang around with these type of people, or if this is happening in your life, 
you know just be on the lookout because this is the after effect so cause you know cause and effect what could the effect be of the cause so, so again that's a very good question and I'm again I go back and I, I think back and you know I think of where she's not right but I know the, the youth now they probably but I had I, first time I ever got drunk was when I was 14 but because at a young age I was playing with old older men I was gr playing with grown men at Arcadia Shepherds yes okay not at 14 but you but were exposed to, I was exposed to a, to a, lot to a of different stuff. environment and obviously you didn't fall into the trap but you do you that's how we mix and mingle and so I would say you know just if you're gonna have a drink make sure you're in the right environment I do think that um, I think it, it certainly did play a, a role in my life um, because of it because I was exposed to it at a very early age um, and then again I think that uh, as you were talking now earlier the relationships I think that's always a challenge you know we um, we feel we you know sex is very important for people yes and, and in our mindset and in the generation or in the world sex is that it's everything to everyone but it's you know I uh, sorry to say I broke my virginity when I was 17 okay we were broke with this what, whatever happened did play a part in my in my life so again it's you know that as that is important as well you know pick your right partner don't rush into things like that it's not you know it's not doing it now it doesn't it's not going to make you a bigger man or a woman you know better woman whatever so i just think that that is that is something that we don't give enough um respect to okay um and then i just think always re i i think again I, like i said about the arcadia shepherds thing i am very fortunate where i i know where i come from i know what what I had or what I didn't have. Um, and yes, I was very fortunate to have a lot. And again, then I was very fortunate to lose a lot. Yeah. Very, imp very important for me. I think because if I was still had a lot, I, I, yeah, I, who knows what I would be. But I had to lose a lot to get reminded, listen Mark, you are a young boy from Sunnyside. You grew up however, Get yourself back down there and Humble i think pie. that is very important i needed to experience it so again it's uh you know everyone wants fame and money and you don't ever you don't get taught how to handle it um and that life for me it's it's, it's not about fame came so people go oh you were famous i didn't ask to be famous i played football very yeah. fortunate play in an era where my, my teammates were very good we were very successful at a club level and at a national team yes. level and yes, became famous, and then it gave me the opportunity to go play, play in Italy and play in the UK. So very fortunate, but I didn't ask for fame. But it, that's how it came along. But I wasn't taught how to handle fame. But not that it, it wasn't my, it wasn't my pre or something that I, I thrived to be. You know, a lot of the youth nowadays, I think they a lot of them want to be famous. You know, on social media, they want to post things and this and that. Fame comes both ways. You guess you can have a, a hundred thousand likes, whatever, but. <laughs> What comes afterwards is how do you handle it? Because fame is not, it's not, uh, it's not something for if you're not taught how to handle it. Because the media are very, uh, they can put you at the top. But my gosh, they do enjoy to bring you back and down then, very quickly. Yeah. And you, whether they do it or whether you do it yourself, it happens very quickly. So I think the the world of being wanting to be fa um, famous and having money in that, there's a lot more to life. Agree. And a lot more to, to 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 humans and people that you know how do we look at each other how do we treat each other do we look each other in the eye do we have respect do we are we honest and truthful enough to our partners to our families i think that's ways much more than anything that you could ever thrive to be wanting to be rich and famous and and you know some some advice that i received that that falls into that is people should spend the, this is advice that was given to me that that exactly layers on what you said 30 30 30 so 30 percent of your time you should be spending with people on your level mm. so i.e at the time you're playing football with teammates processing because you're going through the same things yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know together 30 percent 
of your time should be spent with people that are below you, which means, and the only time you are on top of someone is when you're lifting them up. So giving them, listen, buddy, don't do this. You know, rather don't go to clubs twice a, a week. Go once uh, when you don't have practice the next <coughs> time so that you can be fresh and then 30% with people that are above you. But people are very comfortable to be the big dog in the room. Very, very few people actually say, okay, who's ahead of me in terms of income and in terms of status? Maybe I should reach out and say, listen, this is happening in my life. Any advice for me? Which then you form a part of their 30% of people that they are reaching up and, and, and falling. And, and, and as soon as you, I've experienced, you know, making a lot of money at an early age because I started selling cars at 17. I was selling cars for a friend of my dad's and, you know, I was making a lot of money at, at 18, 19. And I also didn't have someone that I could go up to and say, listen, help me. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm drinking all this money. Or I'm earning 17, 18,000 rand, you know, two, three times a month. My teachers are earning. What's going on in my life? I'm, you know, I'm falling behind with my studies, everything like that. But if you have that person that will give you five minutes, that's ahead of you. Perhaps just like you said, that humble pie, it's fat free. You can't have enough. You can't have enough. Yeah, no, I do I agree 100% what you're saying. I think that when you, in the industry that I was in, football, in the sporting industry, yes. I think that I do believe that if you, you stand with the next to a rugby player, soccer player, cricket player, it's, um, I think it's a lot of, a lot of the, the individuals, not, not all of the individuals, but it's, it's competitive. I am, this is who I am. Yes. This is what I've done. And I don't care what you've done. Yes. So it's very got competitive. It's, it's a it's, different mindset. So, 100%, so get to get to um, that person. To obviously, I'm not. And I'm choosing those three sports yes. in particular. But obviously, you get a, a cricketer or a, we're not, not all the same. I'm just saying it's so competitive that yes. we looked at each other and we shunned down on. Each other. But I played in the World Cup and I didn't, and you did this. So it's it's a it's a. No, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough thing. It's a difficult thing it's to process di during that time. 100%. Because I, I think the maturity level is not there yet. You're just a beast. You want to run over mm. everybody. But, but also, what I also do see is that w I was very fortunate. In, yes, in 96, we won the African Asia Cup. And again, 95, we won the World Cup, Rugby World Cup. So, and then we, at the time, the, the late Hansi Krenier was a phenomenal cricketer. Yes, yes. We had an era of sports that had phenomenal sportsmen. Yes. And, we, and again, it was the stepping stone for our new country. Yes. 94 was the elections, a new country. Now we go win the Rugby World Cup. We win the African Nations Cup. Man. We had a phenomenal cricket team. So Buzzy. it was an era that it showcased what South Africa has. Yeah. And, and I think the individuals, the people in that era, um, fantastic people and characters. Elev elevated to elevated. like godly levels. I mean, we were fortunate to, you know, when we had the opening game for the 96 um, Afghan, we had the Springboks. Yes, they came and came to came to our change room, wished us all the best. So we would gel together to support each other to try and lift this country up, yeah. and we certainly did. Absolutely, we did phenomenal. Ten out and of the ten. characters from all the different um, sporting codes, phenomenal, phenomenal individuals. We don't have that. I'm talking. I'm, I'm very proud of. I'm a South African. Me too. Through and through. And this country, we need individuals to stand up again and say. Yes, this is our country. This is what we stand for, and let's make this country what it's what Madiba wanted for us. Yes, what it's intended to be. What it's intended to be. Yeah, I think, I think, I hope and pray that in the very near future you have leadership in all sorts of departments, governmental, sports, yeah. agriculture, that that rises up and say this is who we can be, and 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 actually follow through, follow through. You, you know, you touched on Madiba. If I if I were to ask you this question, it takes a village to raise a man. It takes a great village to raise an amazing man like you. If you could touch on maybe two or three people that were most influential, it can't be only two or three, but the first two or three that come to mind. I know you mentioned your mom a couple of times, mm -hmm. so perhaps she's one of them, that, you know, this person instilled this in me. And and j just to, just to systemize it in our minds like what did you get out of this person i know what i got out of my dad mm. completely different thing than i got out of my mom 100%. so um i didn't really know my dad but um 
got to know him fortunately just before he passed so my mother certainly um her conviction her personality her you know what she did for me as a child you know and i grew up with my grandma but what she did as a as a figure that i know that what she used to hitchhike to come watch me play a football match wow. the things that she did i think she installed that um that commitment towards football certainly um Again, I would, might sound very peculiar, but my brother, um, he, we grew up very differently. Um, and I made a lot of rubbish, <laughs> made a lot of trouble with Oaks. And my brother would just stand and he would box everyone <laughs> for me. And I'm run already. Rock. I'm running, I'm down he, the he 100 meter down the road. And, but he fought, he's a family man. He's, he's, he's got, I've got more respect for my brother than, for most people, but I don't think I say it enough to him. Or oh, I actually give him his older brother. So you know, young brother always gives the older brother issues. But um, his his way of how he was brought up, I think it's it means a lot to me. And then obviously uh, was very fortunate to meet certain individuals. Um, I'd probably, you know, I think because of knowing who he was, Madiba, who he was, what yes. he stood for, yes. and how he came out of prison and what he wanted to do for this country. Meeting him the first time, obviously that was emotional, very emotional. But I met him, I was fortunate to meet him a couple of times after wow. that. I'm and jealous. Then, and, then, and then people ask me about meeting Madiba, and I say, but every time I met him, it was a different emotion, a different experience for me. That's what he brought into the room. I wow. think that if people were fortunate to have met him, um, and then, you know, everyone says that. Eh? Everyone says that. You know, Diane Brotrek was here, yeah. and she said he was he was getting but hammered at a press conference or at a news event, and he was just looking down. And she was 19 years old or 20 years old. I can't remember. She was a young journalist, and she got assigned this this particular day to go and report on the findings. And she said to me that at one stage she's like looking at this man and she's in all of his presence he looks up and he just smiled at her and then she knew i'm a fan no matter what anyone says i'm <coughs> a fan because he acknowledged me so everybody says that that i speak to that i've had the opportunity of meeting him i mean uh, for me I'm, I'm even more fortunate where you know the, there was a book written about me and lucas Khadebi called Madiba's boys yes. and he wrote the forward for it yes so i was very fortunate to go at his house sit with him and, and have a conversation Process. with the wow. individual where he had time. So I've been very fortunate in my life. So Madiba is certainly um, one, but I've, I have met a lot of very good people out there in the world. I think a lot of my teammates from different countries, Bulgaria. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. I've met some very good people. <laughs> We've produced a couple of yeah, good, fantastic yeah, footballers, yeah. but I've met some, I think that's what football has given me. Yes. I've been very fortunate to experience a lot good things, bad things um, very fortunate to you know people ask me about who's the hardest striker you played against this and that yeah, I've played many games and there's, there's fantastic footballers out there and I've won many games but I've lost many games yes. as well and that's what life's about you know how do you pick yourself up when you've lost the game you know I, I know that <laughs> if you ask me I'll go shoot one of my worst losses was losing 6-1 to Leeds and Lucas was at Leeds, says like, you don't want to lose to Lucas, Lucas. No, that, but I remember that, that at, but at the time, me and the, the other central de um, defender, Richard Rufus, we were injured. So the coach called us in the front and asked us to play. We were injured. So we played. Anyway, we lost 6-1. And it's like, so then they, you lose the game on the Saturday, then the Sunday they, he calls you in. Then he's standing there in front of the whole team and, he's like, and he points fingers at us. And I'm like, listen here. Me and Richard, we were injured. You asked us to play. Yes. And it's a, it's a big thing for, for me as a person because, um, again, we are, you know, we stay in, in an area, you know, where we play. Now you've got to go to the shopping. You've got to get shopping. Now you've got your fans looking at you thinking, anyway. And, and it's a different culture there. It's 100%. a religion there. It's not, it's not even a sport. So you don't, then you find yourself, you want to lock yourself up at home. home. You don't want to go in the public because, but... And then you have that and then you then you obviously then again you have the euphoria when you win a match and you beat a liverpool you beat a man united or, you know so you have the highs and lows but uh, the f the football is and then the sport world um 
it's very, very, it's so similar, as you know, yeah. Yeah, in the business world. Yes. You know, you can make a sale, you don't make a sale, or, you know, you, you have a job, or you lose a job. Um, sports is, it's, it's um, again, I know it's, it seems like I'm walking, uh, talking now in circles, but again, you know, people ask me, but what do I think about the players getting paid so much money now? No, listen, yeah. it's a short career span. Yes. It's now, players, if, you, if, if a club wants to pay you, uh, let's say, what's it now? A um, couple of million? No, six million, I think, uh, what's his name, the youngster at Man City? Anyway, I think he's on, I think he's on 600,000 pounds per week. week. Per week. Per week. So it's a lot of money. But again, um, the, that's the sporting world, that's where he is. But it's, I think when you, as a show that you're doing, is what do we learn from it? So you hope that him, he, his money that he has, that he invests and he does things the right way so that he can have a life after. Yeah. So I, my, why I'm saying this is I think players, are, they deserve the money that they get. Especially at the competitive level. It's what they do level. with it. Yes. It's, it's what, what they, they do, do with, with it. it yes. It's most important. Um, because, you know, people always ask me, what do I think about the amount of money that players, footballers get now? So it is a lot, but the game has changed. It is the biggest sport in the world. It yes. will always be the biggest sport in the world. Agreed. Because nearly all the countries in the world try and play it. Yes. Um, so it's, but yeah, it's a, it's a, the players do deserve it. Absolutely agree. I've asked this question from competitors, sports people, business people, and it's, it's fascinating every time I ask it. When you, when you put on your boots, I know so, some people say, I, I, I asked a, a motocross champion, when you put on your helmet, what happens to you? I want to, you're an ultimate competitive machine killer. He, that's you. <coughs> if you're not in that mindset, then you, you would have never achieved the level. You just said it, you know. Okay. At, at the time, how am I going to spend with, you know, time with people above me? I am on top. You know, like, what have you done? This is who I am. You know, that's the mindset. That's, you, the, only a competitor speaks that way. Just before you're about to run out, you, you're lacing your boots up. You, what, how, how do you process what's about to happen? You know, from, if you don't mind, walking me from the time you wake up in the morning, maybe the previous night, you've got a big game. It's the final. You've got a big game. How do you go sleep? How do you process that morning until the time? Because I know once, once you go on the field, something else happens. But how does that killer instinct look like if I could spend that day with you in your mind? I know it's a weird question. No, it's not. It's a, it's a, I'm, trying, I'm just trying to think back. So, not a final. Let's, let's just talk. We, I played in the English Premier League, so yes. it's every, every, every weekend. Game is a big every, game. Every, it's a big game. Um, and it's full and people so are screaming. I, I think you, you get into a... So, you... I don't want to say superstitious, but you do, you do certain things. So, I, I know for a fact that there was a stage in my life where um, I would wake up on the, on the Saturday morning. I have something to eat. Same and then I, then I would go meditate for like an hour, two hours, stretch, meditate, what's it called, yoga or whatever. And then, obviously then, okay, get in the car, then the family goes with, get to the stadium, get in the change room. So, um, I think I went through certain stages that did certain things. And obviously, not obviously, when, so say I did that and we won, then I would try and do it the next week again. D replicate, Re re repeat, replicate. Repeat, repeat, 100%, okay. 100%. Got you. But, um, I think that you'll get a lot of sports people, I'm, so I'm, I wasn't a good trainer. I didn't like training. Obviously, you have to do it. We did it. But uh, I would rather you know, often go swim or go back golf or do something away from the sport. But that moment, that moment walking out of the stadium and you've done the warm up, okay, you do the warm up and you go back in yes. and you go out, that, I live for that moment. That, I live, live for, for that, that moment, moment walking out. I was very fortunate to be at both my clubs in the UK. I was the captain, yes. became captain. Yes. And to walk out and the fans cheering for the team, um, I lived for that moment. Yeah, and it doesn't mean I played well. I might have made a lot of mistakes or whatever, but I lived for that 90 minutes of 
playing to my teammate and doing the best I possibly could to make sure that we could have a good result. If not, still make sure that I gave the best of myself for my teammates so that we had the chance to win, or, you know, as I said, and, we and lost perform, as well. And perform at your peak. Yeah, I live for that. I must say I live for that. I think the, my biggest experience, um, it is, it is the, uh, you, what was the Wiese Spectacular, which is 120,000 people wow. in one stadium. <laughs> That's so, a country. So fortunate. I'm very fortunate to have experienced that. And on, on that, how do you process because that's a high that not many people will experience. Mm. Only fellow sports people would have experienced, or you know, performers performing on. How do you process from going from that high to how do you sleep at night? Y you know, the, wh what's the ritual then afterwards? Do you, do, do you do a certain thing when you win? Do you do a certain thing when you lose? How do you come down to back to earth? Because you're not on earth then. No, no, so uh, f at the time when I was playing, we were very fortunate that if we, if we, um, you know, won or lost, it doesn't matter. Um, we would, if it was, I'll use it Saturday as an example. We yeah. played on the Saturday, yeah. and if we were played at home, then um, you know, I had a, we had a group of friends that we were very close. Yes, hang with out the wives, afterwards. Then, then we would go out. So we're still normal people, whether yes. we won or lost. We go out, and we know on the Sunday we Can have to be. Can you even go train. out when you when you just come out of that big big win? Like everybody must be on top of you. Like, do you even have a chance to? No, yeah, we do. Yeah, we did. Or oh, a lot of times, because I was the, the chief uh, troublemaker, so a lot of times I got the Oaks to come to my house and then we just, <laughs> we just sit downstairs, snooker to room, and just chat and might play guitar and to chill. So, but just to we, we did feeling. do that. We did do that. I, I tried to find ways because, as I said to you now, is where that, I live for that. that, that I, can you, I can only For imagine. that moment of playing 90 minutes to coming down again and then Can't wait go to, to training again. This is me training. And then <laughs> the next Saturday night, I live for playing a football match. Whether I played well or not, didn't matter. That's training, listen to the coach, you must do this. I'm like, no, I'm bored already. But obviously I did do it. But um, that moment of running out and performing to the best of my ability, I, I enjoyed that. So if I'm to ask you, it's Mark Fish, it's, it's a Sunday. You don't have any training tomorrow, you know, on the Monday or on the Tuesday, and you've got Sunday to yourself. You know what life currently looks like versus the time when you were, you know, at, at, at the peak of your career. What, what does Mark Fish do now when he's hanging out? Is it Netflix, hanging out with your wife, you know, playing golf? Congratulations. Yesterday, you um, actually won the Gary Player Invitationals only. Congratulations. So, uh, thank you. Yep. So I, I try. I try and do a lot um, on a, now on a Sunday. You know, um, my wife drags me to church because she says I need it. Um, we all do, sir. No, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> but if not, you know, then if I've got um, our young kids with, uh, I've, the little boy is very busy, so he wants to keep, keep me busy. He will keep me busy. Um, compared to then, obviously, um, it, was, it was a sun, a Sunday was a day just to relax as much as you can so that you know, you have to re-energize yourself for the next week. Because you still got pain. It I doesn't matter how fit you are. I can only imagine. I, no, 100%. So, but I'm just saying, then that was, you're now preparing where now, I'm fortunate where it's, okay, now we can do what we want to do. Where then I know that on Sunday, I must be at home. I must relax because I must prepare myself now for the next for week. For the come. next week. I want to get into landmines. So I call, I call this question a landmine because Sometimes you step into one and it, like, you know, blows your leg away. But you survive. You know, you process a loss. Different people process a loss different. I, I always, I love losing because you, you, you don't want to lose the lesson because you take it with you. And the next time around, you're a little bit wiser. You know, I'm getting the gray as well. You're a little bit wiser to face that, that challenge. M maybe if you're comfortable sharing one or two landmines with us that people can say, okay, Mr. Mark did this, I'm going to watch out because now we've got the GPS coordinates. We know on Google Earth where we are. We're just going to sign. Can I say my first ex-wife? Landmine, absolutely. Big landmine and blue. Absolutely. No, it, uh, no when I, okay. it's nothing against it. I say, I, I think... Timing wasn't right. No, you, 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 no, no, you I got, right. No, no, I, I, the way I grew up, um, I wanted kids. 
Um, but I got married too young. I was 23 years old. Now you were a oh, that's kid. very young. I mean, I'm not. I can't even look after myself. I mean, you got. I've got an agent that represents me. Takes kids. So I got married too young um, because I wanted something. Yeah. And you know that is. I think that is a, a big thing for me. That. But also in saying that, I also needed a a partner to try and keep me grounded and keep me directed you know, um, in my career. So, but I think the, the making the, the choice of getting married and we think that everything must be, you get married, you have kids, da, 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 da. That's there's, not no, the rush. there's yeah, no rush. There's no rush. It's not yeah. the secret. Yeah, for sure. I think that is, that was a landmine. I got married too early in my age, in my life. Um, and then I think, uh, Oh, there's not many landmines. I've, I, no, there obviously has been landmines, but um, there's nothing I go, oh gosh, should have done this. Well, yeah, if you want to talk about investing your money and, and you know, and I th probably, okay, I'd probably say that um, I retired at the age of 32. I had to, I had yeah. an injury, retired and, you know, it was the top of my career at the time. Yes. Um, came back to South Africa, always was going to come back to South Africa. I wanted to come back and do something here. And you now, you coming from where you're earning this income to where you're not earning, you're getting, you're doing jobs or whatever, whatever you're doing, but you're not earning the same income. So you're living above your expenses. And it caught up with me very quickly because after, um, it took me a while to get, um, to get divorced from my first wife. And, you know, me living in one house, she in house, kids at school, this and that. You know, over a period of four years, I was spending 250000 a month. Wow. Upkeep. Uh, that caught up very quickly. No, that, yeah, nobody can handle that so, pressure. So, um, again, you know, there, there are things that where you make sure that when you're retiring or, you know, make sure you take care of that you, or you look at life differently. You don't have to be there. You don't have to have fancy cars. You don't have to live two big houses and that. You don't. You don't. Live, uh, live to according to your means and, and your earnings, not to the world. That's a big. There. That's a big landmine. I think we all, we all step into and your capacity, your capacity to add value in the marketplace determines your income. But with sports people, it's so, it's so difficult because boom, knee injury, and that happens like nothing. That yeah. It's not a it's not a thing that nine months in a row you keep making bad decisions and bad moves. It just happened. And, and yeah, then all of a sudden the capacity is below the income and what does the capacity do? It pulls the income down because you're not adding, it's so difficult with sports people, so, so difficult. But I mean, everything happens for a reason mm. and you learn out of it and you carry on. Best advice that you've ever received that, that landed. Sometimes it lands like a brick, Pooh. Sometimes advice just lands like snow. And when it touches down, you're like, oh man, this makes sense. That you received and you, you could perhaps share. So, I don't. I think best advice. Sure, I've heard so many people say so many things to me. <laughs> and, um, I think one is definitely my the the lady that was uh, the headmaster of my nursery school. She said to me, Mark, and I'm talking now. So I obviously left nursery school when I was five. Yes. But I remember this thing because she wrote it in my report for my nursery school said, you can be whatever you want to be. And, you know, as I said, at the age of five, I, but I, now that I look back, and I know my mother still got the report, wow. so I can go look at it. And she actually said, you can be whatever you want to be. You will be something big. She knew. She knew you were special. I had a hidden talent, because apparently I could come, I'll be the last kid out of the, and I'm talking, like, we talk, I'm four years old, <laughs> whatever, I can talk a lot. But I was the last kid to come out of the classroom to go onto the playground. But I could convince anyone on the playground that, that they must give me the toy that I wanted to play with. <laughs> so it's, it's another one. But again, um, I think that, um, I, think the, oh, I mean, I think that my best advice, I don't think there's, there's like anyone that stands out, definitely. I just think that um, my 
upbringing, my experience of being having nothing to having everything to having nothing, um, life has taught me. And whether I've grown up enough at the age of 48, let's hope um, somewhere I'll get it right. But um, I just think that you, again, what I said earlier, I think as you get out of life what you put into it. I want to tell you a story that happened this morning on that. You can be anything you want to be. So we, we're processing two managers. So we've got, we've got six branches, six managers, and we've got the sales manager, ops, We've got the dealer principal. And what I like to do, because I'm also competitive, just like you, I like to pin people up against each other. Not unfairly, so I'll have, you know, we, we, we've got C players, B players, and A players. So C players just come into the company. Uh, they finish the cadetship program for three months. So they've got the theory. They've got a little bit of experience. And the C players have to reach a certain amount of sales for three months in a row. They become B players, different commission structure, different basic salary, so the income grows. If they can hit certain markers for three months, they become A players. And now the A players are the, you know, the Mark Fishers of the world, the Ronaldos of the world. When they walk around here, you, you can see by the, the level of, you, you know, the, how far the chin is up, you can see who's an A player. I don't need to point them out. You know the attitude. No. No. But now we've got a, We've got a kid, a young kid. Parents have a business. They own a company, 70, 80 people that work for, for that specific company. He is full with potential. Everything was given to that kid. That kid has got his own car. He, I mean, that, that kid has silver platter, silver spoon in both hands. We pin him up against a boy that grew up in the township. He's got a, a wife and kid that he left there to come and work here, to build a life here. It's not fair how much this kid is kicking that kid's ass. It's not fair. It's not even the same sport. It's like me, <coughs> me trying to play football against you. You know, that's the difference in, in commitment. So you can be anything you want to be. This kid here wants a good life for his family. This kid is going to do everything it takes. And he will eat that kid just because... Of him the knowing hunger and passion. I can, I, I I can be anything I want to be with I, enough work. The comparison that you're using is that a lot of parents want to live their lives through their kids. And I'm talking about the sporting world. I think that's a big challenge for kids out there. You know, um, you, whether it's rugby, soccer, cricket. And I use those three sports because those are our three biggest sports in the in, country. In the country, that's what we grew um, up Now you have to perform because you as a parent didn't really make it or... You know, didn't make it in sports, but the, 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 the pressure on the kids now to make it in sports in those particular fields, it's, 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 a, it's a big challenge and it's, it's scary because a lot, of, a lot of things will happen along the way and kids will lose interest or whatever, but I think the, the, of any, any career, I mean, as we're talking now, that the pressure from parents of wanting to be what the world thinks everyone needs to be. You need to be this player. You need to be a CEO of a company. You need to be this, whether it's, it's Silver Spoon or whether it's working hard. Um, just breathe and allow us to go through, uh, when I say us, as, as humans go through, the process. we are kids. You are, uh, you're learning to be a teenager. Be a teenager. Make those mistakes because it's okay. You know which mistakes I'm not talking about harming people. Yes. Now that then you're a teenager, be, then you're leading up to 21. Do those things because now you're progressing in life, and and don't put pressure on your kids because and 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 kids, don't put pressure on yourself. Yeah. Just breathe and look back because the world is so at the moment is so conforming. We must be this. We must be that. I am very fortunate, and I think again that's why I was talking about the football. A generation of people. I think we grew up differently. Certainly, uh, but there are people that's growing up the same. And but don't put pressure on yourselves to be this that you need to be at the age of eighteen or at the age of twenty-one, or you have to be married. You have to do this. Just take it slow. Follow your own journey. Follow your own journey because your journey is not the same as mine, and mine is not the same as yours or this person. So follow your journey and allow it to take you on a path where you must go. 
Yes. Yes, of, of course. If we are fortunate enough to go, okay, I, I can see, oh, I mustn't go down that path. Yes. Then don't go. Yes. Of course not. 100%. But when you, you, you have to experience something. You have something. to experience. Got you. Beautiful. Very important. So, my friend, may I call you my friend? 100%. Thank you so much. So it's an honor finished. to call you. No, we're not finished. Oh my gosh, I hope not. The, I'm the, enjoying this. The fun stuff is about to start. So, <laughs> we're going to finish the interview in a different style. So, the South African culture, we break bread together uh, because now we're going to become family. But you're a competitor, I'm a competitor. So, the only realm that I can literally compete with you is in my ability to bear pain. I know yours threshold is very high and how we're going to do that is we're going to eat some hot food and uh, we love Nando's but because you're not a standard guest it's not going to be standard Nando's it's going to be tuned a little bit so Perfect. we're going to finish the the rest of the interview we're going to have water milk and see who um, can uh, bear more pain between me and you. I'm excited. Because it's a competition. Yes, sir. Oh, gosh, you've lost Always already. Yes. You've lost already. <laughs> Love it. Go. Love it. I can have tears. I can be crying out of any <laughs> offices in my body. I'm sticking up more when just, I... Just, I hope one of us <laughs> doesn't die. No, no, sure. <laughs> A little bit over top of yeah. that. That's fine. I want to Let's do it. So, I'm going to keep mine open. I won't drink it until you drink it. If you drink it, I'll drink it. Until I drink. So, if you drink... Feel free. That's what you're doing. Okay. I'm going to drink if you drink. If you don't drink, I'll die. But it's fine. <laughs> okay, good. All so, right. but now the other ones, are they just normal hot? No, no, they're hot, hot. hot, hot. All oh, of them are hot. hot. This one is just... This is the hottest one. Oh. Now so, what do you want to do? Do you want to eat that one first? So, we can... Make so our way into we, it? We make our way into okay. it, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. And do we... What is the bread for? I think just I think to try and... The... Yeah. No, no, I gather, I gather that, so... I said, it's also the first one to eat bread then as well. Oh. I'm just asking. <laughs> Where are we going with this? Yeah. I'm just okay, asking. Shit. I, I need to know the rules because <laughs> I, I won't touch bread. If, I, I, I think we can food. have the bread. Can we have the bread? No. No bread? No bread. No, man. I th no bread. Okay, that's fine. That's, that's good. Yeah, only after the, all the chicken. Chicken. Done. So, so chicken done, then we can do the bread. Yeah. Okay, if, so. If you have to. Okay, if you have... <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about... <laughs> okay. Okay. So, are you ready? No. Let's do this. Is it a race? That's what so, no, no. It's not a race. Okay. Are you going to tap out? No. No. We're doing it. Enjoy. Yeah. Come forward, man. Mmm. Oh, wow. Okay. Jeez. Mm. On a that scale of 1 to 10. <coughs> the roof. The roof. The roof is on fire. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Why did you not make me breakfast? I told you. I'm going to start sweating. So there's, you can see that? There's bread, sir, and there's water, if you would like. Yeah. So the first one mm. that you ate isn't the... Well, I gather that. Okay, the third one is a... But I think it's allow, helping my... <clears throat> sweat out all the alcohol that I had the weekend. My <laughs> gosh. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Blocking my ears? <laughs> you laughing because <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't like hot food. You laughing? Okay, you're getting me back. Okay, cool. Okay. Let's do round two. Okay, there. That one's better. Because <coughs> now my, my palate... He's dead. He's dead already. Mm, 100%. It's actually making me shake. Or you think I've got the shivers from the alcohol that drank a weekend. My God. This <laughs> <laughs> <Just> is brief. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Now, this one you say is the hottest. This um, one is the... Like, what is this little red thing? This one is as strong as a mother-in-law. Oh, man, that's, that's not legal, that. Yeah, it's not legal. legal what has been put on there. Are you ready? Yeah. You sure no water? Yeah. No bread. It's a competition. I'm asking. But you're welcome, man. 
No. Sure, sure, you can have water, you can no, have whatever no. you want. Guess first. Lead by example. Guess first. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm not happy. If you're not happy, I'm not happy. Uh, uh, okay. Here we go. What now? What a champ. Something okay. else? No. Have more chicken. Now we're going to process some questions. Oh, uh, gosh. I have to answer questions. Yeah. Okay. So, if you could spend an entire day with someone... It won't be with you. It might be with <laughs> that. Thank you. Who would it be and, and what would you ask that person? Entire day? Entire day. Um, I think because at the moment... It doesn't okay, go I was away. fortunate that I did spend a day with Madiba. But um, I'm a big YouTube fan. I'd love to spend a day with Bono. That's what would you thought. ask him? What would I ask him? I would ask him. They, they to me is, they to me, are you asking these difficult questions because my mouth is on fire? I'm just trying to check You're how you process things okay. under pressure. So I would ask Please, him, the bread helps no, I would and the water him, helps. Their the, the, the <coughs> belief in themselves. How U2 was one of, if not the only band, that they backed themselves. So whatever tour they did, they put their own money into it. They didn't have sponsors. I didn't ever, know that. They never had a sponsor. U2 backed themselves. So wherever they went in the world, they, when they came to South Africa, back the big showcase thing that they did at FMB, that's their own, own money. And... Um, I would ask him how he had that belief. Um, oh my gosh, what is Paul? Oh my gosh, and I do. I find I would normally know this, but Paul Euston is his real name. Okay. I'm a big YouTube fan. When I met him, I had a tattoo on my arm. Beautiful. Bone on the edge. So, but I would ask him that how, because him and the Edge were the ones that started the band. Then you had the the fancy. Guitarist, and then you had the pretty boy uh, drummer that um, okay, is Irish, and I love the Irish. I love them. There's something special about them. My wife originally is from Ireland. Her family comes from Ireland. Very feisty. Oh, like the way you got beaten up twice a week. Yeah. <laughs> same, same. <laughs> so, next question. I want you to go dark here, please. Dark, dark, dark. Oh, you don't want dark. I want you dark. You must be out of your mind. You don't want dark from me. If you could be a fly on the wall. Oh, yeah? Who's in the room? And what are we overhearing? Do I look at South Africa? Anyway. No, no, I'm joking. Do I look at South Africa? Do I look at the world and look at what's relevant now? I'd actually like to, and I'm, I'm not a big American fan, I'm not. <clears throat> but now with uh, Donald Trump, Ooh. when he's come back, I'd love to be a fly on the wall to do what he says. He, he entertains us. Absolutely. And knowing, you know, as a business person, where he's been highs, lows, whatever, whatever, with him, if he can come back, I think, you know, I'm not, as I said, I'm not an American fan, but um, it looked like their country was better run. I agree. Under him. I agree. For, for Americans, for Americans. I agree. So, I, th I think maybe that fly there. Or if you go dark. <sighs> <laughs> there we go. Those are the eyes. My wife knows who I like. I'd love to be a fly on a wall and just say, or just listen to Eva Mendes just talking. Oh man, I love Eva Mendes. Also a weakness for me, uh, sorry. The second name is Eva. But, yeah. <laughs> but it's yeah. Mr. Mark, your first car. Obviously not a Golf, because you can't fit in a Golf. What was your first car? First car I bought from my, my aunt, it was a Honda Ballard. Oh, well, you're one of those guys. Was it a VTEC? No, no. no. Oh, gosh, I can't even remember, but it was a Honda Ballard. Yeah, that was uh, my first car I bought. And what then, color? It was um, this color. Okay. But Any nice stories in that Honda Ballard? No, no, no. No, no none that no, we can no. share. No, 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 it wasn't. No. Okay. Um, <laughs> no. No. What's your dream car? What is Mark Fisher's dream car? 
I've had it in like which, which one? So I had a Ferrari. I had all the fancy cars, but my favorite car was my S, the old S class, S sixty five AMG. Oh, the V twelve, the V twelve, high turbo, a thousand horsepower. I don't know, you know the cars. Yeah, I yeah. just a, a thousand, a thousand newton meters. <coughs> sorry, it was a thousand. First car to have a thousand newton meters, and at that stage, it couldn't handle more because the diff would break. Yeah, no, amazing car. Huh? See, that's not beautiful. No, I beautiful. used to love that car because then <clears throat> you get the, my oldest boys, kids, and then get the, what was it, the, the Audi 8 came out, what was it? Uh, S8. Fan? No, not the S8, but the fancy one, the, yeah. Yeah, what yeah, was yeah, it called? Yeah. What's it called? Quat uh, Quattro, yeah, yeah, yeah. Came yeah, out, yeah. and the kids, my kids were like, oh, damn, look at this car. I'm like, let's watch. From then, I just from Ooh. robot to robot, I did sort of for fun, anyway. And I used to race, or not race, drive past, and then... You get the motorbike guy will come past and he gives it a thumbs up and you know. He knows. That was a proper car. He knows. I agree. I had a lot of nice cars, but I think that was much, was my dream car. It was everything that I thought it would be. I'm a Mercedes person. I'd, so, um, Honda. Then, obviously, then I bought a BMW. Then I was, I was sponsored by the BMW, but then I bought a BMW convertible. And then, then I was overseas. So then, in, overseas in in, um, in Italy, I, I had a small car because to travel and that, and Italians they drive like this. And the roads are <laughs> yeah, small. And, it. and then, you know, it was Mercedes when when I lived in the UK, it's wherever it was Merck, Merck, and then I bought the fancy Ferrari, which was which one did most you get? Street, I couldn't remember. It was black, but it was it was so quite the worst. If you want to say about going back and things you shouldn't have done, I bought that car. My I lived. Literally three minutes away from the training ground, and that's the only time I drove it there. And you couldn't race or anything, and you, because I went, I didn't take it to matches because the family went with. Got you. So that was a. So it was a pointless buy. That was, there was a no need mine. for it. There was no. I bought a Harley. <laughs> I had a In Harley. In England. But yes, but I didn't drive it because I wasn't allowed to. I wasn't insured for it. So it was and like, it was raining I half the time. Push it. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Some awesome. Silly things, but anyway. Before we get to favorite book, who's your... Sorry, but the fastest I've ever been... Yes. In a car. In a car. Yeah. Driving. Yeah. Was... Okay. The, the, the Ferrari, I think I got up to 200 miles per hour. 200 miles is? per hour is 300. So 60... It's about 340, 330, 340. Uh, so you had a proper Ferrari. Yeah, it was yeah, a, yeah no, no. It yeah, was yeah, a newish yeah, yeah, one, uh, yeah. 330, yeah. 340. Black some. I think the funniest <laughs> some, some crazy things, man. The funniest thing is so now I'm getting now used to this Tiptronic. So I yes. get the for I think they I think they delivered the car. Now I want to go drive it, so I stole it at the, at the at stop sign. <laughs> so you that guy that the, the rich they guy that can't we, drive his Ferrari. No, no, not the rich guy. Who's, who's this youngster that's stolen the car from the parents? I had to call Dropping the dealer. I had to call the dealer to help. <laughs> hey, bro, how do I start the car, guys? <laughs> What's an idiot? I was, but anyway. And the fastest you've been was that with that car, 200 yeah, miles. Yeah, in, in South Africa, uh, 300. I drove 300 on the Krugersdorp Highway. Krugersdorp Highway. <laughs> in the, in the, uh, the, the, what's it? The SL. In the SL. The 65. Yeah. Uh, 63. 63. 63, yeah. Amazing car. Yeah, Amazing but I'm just saying fast. That's an end. But fast. now I've actually calmed down quite a bit. Now we drive. Except when the wife, when she sleeps and we have to drive, then I drive fast and then she wakes up and she makes me slow down again. So, so boring. I, I've got a similar story. I, <laughs> I asked my wife because she's on the phone. I was driving an M6. She's now a, the new ones. Yeah, she's, I saw yeah. some BMs. My gosh, no, some fancy cars. Eh? So sure. she's busy texting someone. So I ask her, babe, because the car's quiet and the radio's like me medium level. She says, yes, yes. So have you ever been, and I mentioned the speed. She says, no. I said, now you have. Then she looks, and then she's like, ah, screaming. Then I let go. But yeah, very close to your speed. Yeah. I don't say up or down, but close to your speed. This is a unique interview. I've done some interviews where I went, I went on to a show in the UK. I can see, you know why I'm talking so much? Because my mouth is on fire. That's what you guys do. <laughs> I must That's why say, you're asking the dark questions. <laughs> you are, good. You are well. a flippant champ. I had a guy here like, lie on the couch, and he started convulsing. He, his body started shaking. Another person started crying. I don't want to name and shame them, but he started crying. But you are, you are an a, absolute champ. I did a, I, I'm trying to think of the show. I think it was something fish. So they invited me on the show. So they flew me, 
um, flew me down to um, London. I'm going on to the show at 12 o'clock at night. So I've done some crazy stuff. It's like weird stuff, but anyway, it's enjoyable. I've been very fortunate. You enjoying this one? Uh, this is very interesting how the mouth is on fire, the roof. <laughs> Have you seen that song? The roof, yes. the roof is on fire. We don't give a what's letter. That, what's the band's name? Uh, Come on. Uh, uh, what's the band's name? Ground. <gasps> yeah, but anyway. Okay, we'll get it by before we finish, I'm sure. Favorite sports person and favorite book. Let's process favorite sports person first. Fa at the moment, favorite? No, of all time. Someone that you're like, sure. oh man, that guy was an animal. Sure. That's a, it's very difficult to say. Difficult? No. I, so not even being a... Sure, no, it's difficult, eh? Difficult. That okay. is very difficult. I think you, if you follow different sports, obviously you have different... But I think for me, um, Michael Jordan. Yes. What he did for basketball. The GOAT. Unbelievable. Again, now you've got Tiger Woods, what he did, what he's done for golf. So, the, and now we even talk about, let's talk, we, let's, we could go football. We're fortunate, you know, people, every, if you're football fans, people will go, okay, are oh, you Messi or Ronaldo? <clears throat> We've been fortunate over the last 12 years because I think it's, we had two different, Benzema was now voted a yes. player, so Benzema, and before, so over the last 14 years, there's maybe been two, ex two other people. Otherwise, it's either been Ronaldo or Messi. Messi yeah. And yeah. we are just fortunate to have experienced that. Yes. Again with tennis. Nadal, yes. Djokovic and Federer. Yeah. Not even Djokovic. More, uh, not that I'm not Djokovic, phenomenal sportsman, yes. but Nadal and Federer finals. Yes. yes. Um, and then in tennis, Serena and uh, Venus Williams. Serena Williams, what she's done. So we've had, we've very fortunate. Yeah, it's a difficult question. Some, and I love your some answer. Some phenomenal. Because there I'm isn't a, one. I'm not, I'm not a Formula One. Uh, you know, people will say, is Lewis Hamilton the best ever? Yeah, on his record, it probably, but he's not. For me, no, no, just, me, just from a point of view where you look at the car, he's had the last, when he's won, he's had the best car. Where Schumacher didn't have the best car at Benetton. He didn't. And... Schumacher, then you had Urgent Senna. You know, so it's very fortunate. Fortunate because the, the, I follow or looked at many different sports and there's oh, they, these individuals that have stuck out that are... Exceptional. Again, again, people go, is it Pele, Maradona? For me, Maradona. Yeah. Um, Pele, yes, the youngest, guy to, youngest person to score a goal at the World Cup and won many World Cups with Brazil, but Brazil would have won the World Cup Without if Pele wasn't there. Agree. Maradona, what he did in uh, he 86. Was, with the hand of God, forget that. The yeah. goal, his second goal he scored. And f forget his... Addictions yeah, he, and all that. His lifestyle, stuff. whatever. Yeah. He did that. And when he went to, to Italy, what he did for Napoli. You know, what he, what he did as an individual for the sport. Yeah, it's, there's, there's many out there that's L very Lewis, fortunate. Lewis Hamilton is a topic that always comes up. Uh, my... So I'm I'm not his biggest fan, but my my opposing opinion or my my two cents, whatever it's worth, is you know having having come from a rough background, mom and dad situation, dad worked two three jobs to be able to support him in the go karting scene, and to have sorry no no okay but you're saying a go karting scene again, well you got yes you're working hard but go karting you need money for that that's it. That's so it. you're still privileged. You're not privileged. Uh, uh, and then when Lewis says, no, he wants to come here to his homeland, Africa, it's like for the guy. That, so, that, that's I bullshit. Yeah, that's bullshit. So, but what I'm saying is, yeah. the moment that he started earning and achieving big success, where I respect his discipline is to mm. stay grounded and still stay as focused and as committed, even though he's, he's no longer waking up in, a, in the house that he was. You know, that, 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 that yeah. sort of... No, that's, that's, not, not in my book. I don't. I don't, not. I don't. He's not one for me. I just don't. There's, you know, again, sorry. That whole Black Lives Matter. I got caught short for it because I said all lives matter. I know how I grew up. Yes, all lives matter. Do that matter stance, and even the, the English Premier League for the guys still needing. But they've changed it. Remember, it was Black Lives Matter. Now it's because I fight against racism. Racism, I do understand. Hundred Because yeah. it's all with yes. But. I don't believe in how the F1 and Lewis and when some of the drivers stood up against him, 
you're not you're not bigger than a sport. That's uh, the key, uh, eh? Hundred percent. So I don't 100%. think I don't think. From <laughs> and looking read, at it from I'm, that and, from that point of view, uh, agree. And I am um, I'm a and uh, I would like to actually I would like to meet Bernie Eccleston. I read his book, and it's like a rags to riches story. Beautiful. Being a mechanic, and 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 obviously we know what he's done and he sold it, but he would be someone inter interesting to to have a chat with. But. Um, so yeah, I don't have a favorite person in sports. A long answer. Do apologize. We, we yeah, um, we've had a we've had a, a privilege. Uh, obviously, with social media and with technology that we can share and stream and stuff like that. 100%. There's been so many heroes in so many different arenas. Yeah, agree. Just I'm trying to think if I've missed someone that I should have mentioned. I, I followed because there's been books written about him, but but I followed Kobe Bryant's career. Mm. And, you know, obviously with him passing away and it, it's, a, it's oh. a, the, the Black Mamba. Wow, that, that man. And just the stories and how he was dedicated to his family and that. that that's, and, and, and I didn't know, training, I didn't follow yeah. basketball then. But wow. So much, but yeah, you, again, 100%. It's yeah. someone you, again, it's like when you go meet a sports person or you watch, or you watch someone play sports and then you meet them and they're exactly Who you as think you want them to be. Like, yeah. I mean, when I met Bono, he was just... Bono. Wow, man, I'm you too. I'm rocking, growing up, watching, listening music, whatever. When I met him, he was down to earth. He had, a, he had his time to talk to me. I didn't have to. So, yeah. and but when you experience that, then I think that's... But kudos to you, sir, because when I first initially, we, we met a couple of weeks ago to discuss this interview and to process how we're going to make it work. And, you know, sir, I, I freaked out. I'm like, yeah, so nice to meet you. I'm just a human. I'm, I'm Mark. Call me Mark. I'm not a sir. Let's have a chat. I'd love to do it. Humble. Thank you very much. Are we finished? No, we're not. Ah. There's one more. There's actually a few more. <laughs> so favorite book. Favorite book or favorite movie? Sure. So quite a few biographies I read. Um, man, there's, uh, sure. I don't, I'd, I'd probably say the book that I read try and read the most and that's the most educational for me no matter how many times i've read it <laughs> the bible beautiful yeah it probably is i need yeah. to read it every day to yeah. remind me yeah. how fortunate and how lucky i am because it, it gives you the advice that you need at the period of your life that Always. you're reading it yeah 100%. beautiful um anyway there's many other books i can't think of them at the top of my head at the moment uh movie yes oh sure. some good movies out there yes Sure, it's just, I think, I think, oh, I, I'm a movie person, so I enjoy movies and I watch very, my wife's become a little bit dark, she watches all these muffy and killings and that's a bit violent, but uh, <laughs> I think if, Hence the cut I on the lip, no, she's think, been getting some tips there. <laughs> so I think no matter what, and no matter however long I still live for and, and whatever movies come out, I think that Shawshank Redemption will always be yeah. something. It's okay. in the top. It's in the it's top. Will always. always be. I get goosebumps. I mean, what he did there to get out of the prison and you know wrongly accused for killing his wife, and then you know just and always. I think because Morgan Freeman's in it. Yes. <laughs> it's always a movie with Morgan Freeman. It just makes yes. peace. Oh my gosh, man! What's up? What's up? <laughs> Joe? Um, Wolf of Wall Street. Come on. Love it. Come on. Love it. <laughs> Love it. Love Capro it. is un. Believable he should have won an Oscar, Oscar for that. Yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. Wolf of Wall Street. That is one of the most funniest. And uh, now there's many. Okay, now you're gonna start, and I'm gonna just get a wrong one. There's some phenomenal movies out there. I mean, what did we say now? The, the one in the day, Hangover. Hangover. The original yes. Hangover. Yes. That is so classic. How many times would we, as as youngsters or whatever friends, go out and you wake up the next morning, you go, oh shit, what did we do? You <laughs> what did we do? <laughs> what <laughs> you done? Where are we? <laughs> Alan is the legend. Yes. Alan is the legend. I think you can watch, uh, I'm quite an um, emotional person where I can watch a movie and I can cry because it's, it's touching my heart. You feel that? I feel at the moment that time and my daughter, when I, she'll go, Dad, are you crying again? I'm like, hmm. And then I watch her and she will cry. Sure. Um, but That's I, beautiful. I, the movie, if there's a, most movies have a story to it, obviously. Yes. But um, uh, I couldn't, certainly get involved into the movie and if there's a compelling yeah. story and a message 100%. yeah 100 so 
what's next? What can we look forward to? What are you currently involved with? What are you busy with? What do you spend your time on? <clears throat> so, um, I think I did touch with it when I met you, but um, so I've, I'm trying to create a shorter version of football. Yes. Um, and through the help of one or two individuals, I'm slowly getting it played in different countries. Um, but yeah, the short version of football is to something to help develop, but also to bring a little bit more excitement to the game, where we know what T20 has done for cricket. Yes. We're more excited, you know, people don't want to watch, sit and watch all day cricket. Yes. T20 has played over three hours, I think, both teams batting. Uh, and sevens rugby, what it's done for rugby. Yes. You know, a lot of these players have gone through now playing for sevens, gone on to play for the Springboks. Yes. So it's developing the game. And trying to do the same with football. So it's a process, but um, I'm very fortunate through an individual that um, sees the reason and why I'm trying to do it and it's given me the opportunity to, <coughs> to do it in different countries as well. So <coughs> for boys and girls. Beautiful. So, so we're trying to develop it. Can we put up some links at the bottom so people can reach out and get involved and ask more questions? Are you comfortable with that? Yeah, 100%. We can show you some love and promote it for, from our side as well for, through our databases. No, definitely. It's, uh, I mean, it's called Fast Footy and it's uh, <coughs> 20 minutes a half. Um, you flick the coin and when you win, uh, win the toss, you select when you want. Uh, we've actually changed it now. When you, <coughs> when you have a seven-minute power play, and in that seven minutes, the opposition must take three players off the field. So it becomes 10 v 7. Wow, so okay. the point for that is that you, the more attacking player you have, obviously we're hoping to get more goals, excitement, and also teaching you how to, to play the game differently as, as a, an attacking team. And then obviously then as a defensive team, yes. you know, defending seven players. Um, we also say that if you score outside the 18-yard area, which we want to encourage people to shoot. To take shots. Okay, it counts as two goals. Wow, okay. And then one. But now we've also created, a, it's called a super power play, which means that if you are on attack, oh, did I stick that in my eye? I they hope not. Just have my done friend, that. But my anyway, friend, <laughs> that's the, you play with fire, I, right? Um, <laughs> I think I might. It might be a nice <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but, and then we have a superpower play, and the superpower play is that what we want the teams to attack when they're attacking. If the whole team, not the goalkeeper, if the whole team is over the half a line, and now you shoot outside the 18 yard, instead of counting a two, it counts as four. As four. Four. Okay, so you want. We want to attack. We want teams to attack. And Let's then, go for it. And then we have a. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Does it count if you put water in my eye? <laughs> <laughs> I no. can't believe you just did that. Uh, anyway. Oh, no. And then we have, um, okay, so then we have, at the end of the game, there's no, no uh, extra time. The penalty shootout, there's a choice now where you can either, on the 18 yard area, it's crossbar challenge. You yes. Crossbar without a goalkeeper, but also we've created something now where at the, the center circle, you know, the edge of the circle. Yes. Um, going to the one goal, you've got 10 seconds to score a goal against the goalkeeper. They used to do it in America. Okay, 10 seconds. So, so one, on one, one on one against the goalkeeper. That's fun. That's exciting. That's exciting. So, so, but it's, we, we want to, it's, it's very difficult, but we would love that, um, that experience of fans having an experience. Because yes. the Americans get it right. Yes, you know, they, they have do. that whole experience. <clears throat> that we, and that's what we want for the football. That the, not only coming to watch the, the, the game, but there's an experience for the fans in the stadium. So that's, that's where we're trying to go with it. Um, but let's see. Beautiful. I wish you all the luck and success Thank going so forward much. with your adventure, sir. And, you know, in closing, I want to say thank you for sharing your time, being generous with your time. You have definitely left me and the entire team better than when you found us. Thank you very much. I've had an awesome chat to you. I can't believe you didn't take any water and just, you know, boom, in the eye just to show you I'm better. You're a winner, sir. No, <laughs> thank no, you very no much. Yeah, we a, declare you the winner. <laughs> but I must say, again, it's, uh, I, I wish you all the success. You thank and you, your sir. team. Um, Mac, you know, your, the, your hospitality towards me and, and my wife and our foundation. And um, I just wish you all the success, man. Remember us little people when you're even bigger. So, <laughs> you must uh, remember, remember you. us little but people. Thank you very thank much. You very much Sid. It's thank been sir. phenomenal. One of my best ones. Thank, thank you, you, sir. We have the bread now. <laughs> Shit, how are you still <laughs> surviving? No, that's a tip of it. I'm going to ah. <laughs> Did you see I still haven't? I'm the winner. I haven't touched bread, nothing. Else. No, you won already. But it made me talk. Is that why you do it? For your folks to talk. Yeah. I'm talking to my lips. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, <laughs>